but because in the previous classes we have taken uh, a number of uh, important details bi ta'ala this evening we will review we will review and this is something that the people of Nadas they used to do amongst themselves they would review from time to time reviewing the knowledge even if we were to read in the books of usul al-hadith and the terminology the hadith terminology many of them will find babu al-mudhakara the chapter of al-mudhakara and reviewing and reviewing the narrations and reviewing the narrations meaning in a book of mustara hadith you may open it and read and you'll find a chapter of al-sahih and the chapter of al-hasan and the chapter of al-daif and then under some of these chapters you may find the chapter of al-mursal and the chapter of al-mu'allaq and al-mudallas and so on and so forth if you continue reading through that throughout these chapters you will find the chapter of al-mudhakara so this is something specific to the people of hadith in general for the students of knowledge until it has been narrated from ibn abbas and all the allahu anhumma that he would say tadhakaru hadha al-hadith fa inna mudhakaratuhu hayatu tadhakaru hadha al-hadith fa inna mudhakaratuhu hayatu that you must review and go over these narrations you must review and go over these narrations because indeed in reviewing in, in reviewing it, it will be revived and given life. So this is uh, something that is very important and a methodology of a student of knowledge to take the knowledge, no doubt, to be engaged in studying and, and in learning and in sitting in the lessons and in sitting in the classes. But if a person, he were not to review and to go over the knowledge from time to time, he will forget it and it will slip away. He will forget it and it will slip away, especially the Qur'an. Even the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he mentioned specifically about the Qur'an, أَنَّهُ أَشَدُّ تَفَسِّيًا مِنَ الْإِبْرِ فِي عُقُولِهَا Some wordings, أَشَدُّ تَفَلُّتًا مِنَ الْإِبْرِ فِي عُقُولِهَا تَعَهَدُ هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ تَعَهَدُ هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ Review, review and go over the Qur'an because indeed it will slip away quicker it will slip away quicker than the than the camel in uh, in its rope that is tied down with, and he meaning because the camel, they used to tie it down with the, with the uqul, yani the aqil, which is a rope that they would use and they would tie it around its leg, but the camel will mute, it will move, it will move and it will move and if it's left without anyone looking after it, and without anyone checking on it, then eventually the rope will become loose and it will get away, and it will get away. So this is the comparison uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he made for those who memorize the Qur'an. That if a person, he does not look after the Qur'an that he has memorized and go over it from time to time, it will, it'll get away from him in the same manner. It'll get away from him in the same manner. And it's an amazing comparison in reality. And, and it's from the, the beautiful advice and admonition. And likewise, the concise speech of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, how this camel, they'll tie it down. I mean, this is some. Of, this is from their property, and from their most precious and beneficial property that they have and that they own and that they use and that they benefit from. So they'll tie it down and they'll look after that. But uh, if it's not checked on from time to time, it will slip away. You will be able to get out. It will move around and move around and move around until the knot loosens enough for the camel to get out of the of the knot or out of the rope and, and to slip away and be free and to slip away and be free. And we see that likewise that this doesn't happen all at one time generally. Like the camel is not able just uh, to shake its leg one time and then get out because they'll tie it down tight. They'll tie it down tight. They'll take the means. But this is something that requires muraja'ah. It's something that requires mu'ahada. It's something that requires for a person to come back and look, look after and check on from time to time. That he cannot just leave it like that and expect it to come back and it will still be tied down tight. Rather, if he, if he waits too long, he may come back and it may be uh, very loose, about to get away. And if he did not check in time, it could possibly be, have come in loose entirely and he might not find his animal. And he might not find his animal. So likewise, the Qur'an, it has to be reviewed. And that's specific with the narration, but also the knowledge. It has to be reviewed. A person has to, has to review the knowledge and go over it. Or else it's going to slip away. It has been narrated from Zuhri, rahimahullah, Muhammad ibn Shihab, uh, Zuhri, Rahmatullahi alayhi, he died in the year 124 from the best, from the best of the narrators of hadith. And he was from the, the best of his time, rahimahullah ta'ala, and he was from the first to actually gather 
the narrations in written form in one in one particular scripture in one particular place at one time he was ordered by Umar ibn Abdul Aziz rahimahullah who died in 101 to uh, to collect the narrations of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in written form so he was the, from the first to do that so from his advice and even before that subhanallah shay bi shay uh, has been narrated from Zuhri likewise about memorizing he said badatna al hifza wa qulubuna kashiyab wa qulubuna kashiyab that we began memorizing and our hearts were like tight uh, narrow mountain passes fa asba fa as fa asbahat kal awdiya taltahimu kull shay taltahimu kull shay and they 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 became to be like valleys devouring everything Devouring everything. Taltahimu kulli shay. Yani that, that in the beginning they found difficulty in memorizing, their hearts were tight. Uh, but after perseverance and steadfastness and seeking the aid of Allah, their hearts became to be like valleys, swallowing everything. Swallowing up everything that came yani, in their way. From his advice with regards to this, he mentioned, uh, Rahimahullah, uh, about, about the afa, the afa of ilm. Afa tul ilmi. Al-afa literally is uh, a marad, yani it's a disease. But it could be translated to be like a plague. Likewise, if there are crops, if there are crops that a person is he's cultivating and he's trying to harvest, uh, many times uh, an afa will come to them and wipe them out. <coughs> a plague will come to them or a disease will come to them or some insects will in invade the, the pastures and destroy it. And destroy it or, or the rain will come and uh, the water will destroy it or there will not be any water and uh, they will dry up and be destroyed this is considered an afa this is considered a type of disease so this is uh, the meaning of that so the word afa this is the general understanding that it's a disease but it's a type of disease that whenever it comes many times you will wipe out that which is in its path also from that same understanding we have afat uh, lisan the diseases of the tongue the diseases of the tongue, why are they called afa? Oh, afat, because they wipe out a person's deeds. They wipe out a person's deen. What do you have the billah? What do you have the billah? The diseases of the tongue. So he's saying here the diseases of knowledge. The diseases of knowledge. Knowledge, it has the disease. And here, actually, there are many of them. Actually, there are many of them. Many afat, at ilm, the people of knowledge, they have discussed. But here he's referring to a specific issue. So he says, Afatu ilmi al nisyan, wa tarku al mudakara, wa tarku al mudakara. That the disease of knowledge, the ill, the ill of knowledge, is al nisyan, wa tarku al mudakara. Is forgetfulness, is forgetfulness and leaving off review, and leaving off reviewing. Forgetfulness and leaving off reviewing. So the, no doubt, forgetting something is uh, is a great disease that will uh, affect the person's knowledge. And you no doubt that if you were to memorize something or to learn something and then forget it, and then forget it, and then this knowledge has been wiped out, it's been removed, he lost it, until he remembers. But he mentioned likewise, وَتَرْكُ الْمُذَاكَرَ Leaving off review. Leaving off review. So leaving off review is a disease, is a calamity that will wipe out the knowledge. And really that's the means to, that's the means to, and nisyan to forgetfulness. The means of forgetfulness is that a person, he will, uh, he will not review. He will not review. So this knowledge is precious. This knowledge is valuable. This knowledge is the knowledge of the hereafter. This knowledge is uh, the greatest, the greatest knowledge and the most uh, beneficial knowledge and uh, the most virtuous knowledge. And those who seek it truthfully for the sake of Allah, they are the, they are the most virtuous and the best and most noble and honorable of mankind. Like the poet, he says, "Al-ilmu ashrafu matlubun wa taribuhu lillahi akramu man yamshi ala qadmi." The knowledge is the most virtuous thing a person could seek after, and the one who seeks it for the sake of Allah, he is the most honorable. He is the most honorable of, the, of those who, who are walking on the earth. He is the most honorable of those who are walking on the earth. So this this knowledge is honorable, and from the wisdom of Allah Azza wa Jal, is that uh, one he has to strive to obtain it. And if he is not careful and does not show proper respect and honor for that knowledge, it will leave him. He has to make effort to keep it in his heart. He has to make effort to keep it in his heart. It's not something that just comes, in, just comes like, like nothing. Rather, he has to work hard to have it. And then likewise, he has to work hard to keep it. 
and also from the great means of remembering knowledge and not forgetting is that a person who will implement that knowledge in his life. And it has been narrated from Sufyan ibn Uyayna, Rahimahullah ta'ala, he died in the year 198. He said, Kunna bi al amari bihi. Bid amari bihi, that we used to seek help and aid and assistance in memorizing the narrations by applying them. By applying them. And this is something that they had known from the foundation. And they had learned this and realized this and from the very beginning, that we used to seek help. And he meaning that it's difficult to memorize narrations, especially in the manner that they would memorize, memorizing chains and chains and different chains with uh, different narrators and different manners uh, of narration. One of them would say, Sami'tu, uh, and the other one would say, Hadathana, and the other one would say, Hadathani, and the other one would say, An, and the likes like this. And maybe there will be chains leading all to one narration, and one narration would have a number of different chains and the likes like this. Uh, yet they would memorize all of them. Yet they would memorize all of them and the chains that had come in the manner that the chains were narrated likewise. And if he said hadathana, he didn't say qala hadathani. He said qala hadathana. And he, this is because there's a big difference between the two. There's a big difference with, between the two. And he with the scholars of hadith. With the scholars of hadith. So they memorized these affairs precisely. So no doubt this is something difficult and heavy. So it said, "Kunna nasta'inu ala hifz al-hadithi bil amari bihi." We used to seek help. You know, we used to find aid and assistance. We used to find help in memorizing these narrations by applying them, by applying them. So the knowledge that a person applies in his life daily, then uh, many times he will never he will never forget that. He will never forget that. But if there's knowledge that he memorizes and learns, but he doesn't apply it for one reason or another, then many times he will forget that. Some of the examples the people of knowledge make, and this is not necessarily always uh, considered uh, uh, something that, uh, that is blameworthy, and in every circumstance, for example, if a person he memorized, if a person he memorized the, the dhikr of a safar, the dhikr of a safar, the, the, the dhikr, the remembrance that you make and the supplication that you make whenever you travel, whenever you travel, and likewise whenever you return home. And whenever you return home. So a person who's always traveling, at least once a week or once a month, for example, and he's making this dhikr, then many times he will not forget. But somebody who does not travel often, and he, for example, memorized a book of athkar, or he memorized a book of hadith, for example, where the likes of these narrations are mentioned, uh, like bulug al maram or muharrar, so on and so forth. If he did not review the likes of these narrations, he will forget them. He will forget them, and, he, and he's not blameworthy because he's not required to apply it daily because he doesn't travel daily. But if he didn't uh, review it from time to time, then he will forget it. Then he will forget it, and this is the case of knowledge. So this is in reality uh, a great failure. Wallahu musta'an in the karamity, like he's saying, afatul ilmi, afatul ilm, the disease of knowledge. Because, for example, memorizing the Quran, barakallahu fiqum, many times it requires effort. It requires effort. A person he must to memorize one page of the Quran. Some people are more proficient in, in that than others, and some people have a, a, a better memory than others. But in general, everybody's going to have to work hard. And need to memorize one page of the Quran. Some people can do it in a brief moment. Others they can do it in a day. Others they can do it in two days or three days. Whatever is easy for them. But in any case, a person he has to take time, and he has to make effort to memorize it. So then, whenever he puts out this effort and he memorizes, if he doesn't follow that up, it will go away just like that. He'll go away just like that. So now this whole time and this effort that he has spent, in the end, the fruit is nothing. He has zero. In the end, the fruit is nothing. He has zero. He says, I memorized the Jews of Amma. MashaAllah. Okay, recite the Mutlafifin. He can't remember. And it's as if he didn't even memorize. And because the effort that he made now is completely lost. It's completely lost. If it's, if it's soon that he realizes his mistake, he can review quickly and it will come back easy. But if he waits a long time to review that which he memorized before and forgot, then he'll have to re memorize again as if he's memorizing from the beginning. As if he's memorizing from the beginning. So this is something that, uh, that is important. And it requires uh, dedication. And it requires diligence. And it requires success from Allah Azza wa Jal. And from the means of that is to review. Is to review and to go over the knowledge. It has been narrated from Al Mizzi likewise that he wrote po lines of poetry about this, and his students used to hear this from him. Al Mizzi, rahimahullah he died in the year 742, and he from the great scholars of, his, of hadith of his day. And he was well known for his knowledge uh, of, the, of the narrations of the Prophet and his knowledge of the, of the men.
the narrators of hadith specifically. Rahimahullah ta'ala, he would say, Man has al ilma wa dhakarahu, saruhat dunya hu wa akhiratu. Fa adim lil ilmi mu dhakaratan, fa hayatu al ilmi mu dhakaratu. Man has al ilm, yani man, man has salah al ilm, whoever obtained knowledge. Man has al ilma wa dhakarahu, whoever obtains knowledge and reviews it and goes over it, whoever obtains knowledge and reviews it and goes over it, saruhat dunya hu wa akhiratu. Then his worldly life and hereafter will all be upright and correct. And he will be rectified. Then his worldly life and his dunya and his hereafter will be, uh, will be upright uh, and good. Will be upright and good. And he by, by learning and reviewing. By learning and reviewing. And he learning and reviewing the knowledge. Because the knowledge is light. The knowledge is light. And the knowledge is a means uh, of safety and security in this life and the hereafter. And knowledge is a means for happiness and bliss for eternity. In this life before the hereafter. And there's a jannah in this life before the hereafter and that's the jannah of knowledge and that's the paradise of knowledge and learning about Allah and his attribute and his names and attributes and learning about his prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his sunan and laws and legal ways and learning about the deen of al-islam the legislation and the path that leads to the pleasure of Allah azza wa jal the one who learns this knowledge and, and, and properly with a pure intention and implements it to the best of his ability he will find jannah before he dies a paradise in his heart that can never be taken from him or stripped from him bi'idhnillahi ta'ala and in the hereafter it's even greater and better uh, for him than it was in this life so the knowledge by obtaining it and then taking the means to uh, to keep it and to preserve it and to maintain it a person his worldly life will be upright and rectified and likewise his hereafter Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he mentioned in his book فَإِمَّا يَأْتِيَنَّكُمْ مِنِّي هُدَى that if whomsoever from you guidance comes, and my guidance comes to you, meaning the, the knowledge, the knowledge, the guidance is, is knowledge. The revelation is, is knowledge. Whomsoever my guidance comes to you, so whoever follows my guidance, then he will not, he will not go astray, nor will he, nor will he be unhappy or miserable. Nor will he be unhappy or miserable. Ibn Abbas and radiallahu anhuma he mentioned about this uh, this noble verse of Allah Azza wa Jal. He said, uh Takafal Allahu Liman Kara al Quran wa amila bima fihi Allah Yadilla fit dunya wala yashka fil ahira. Takafal Allahu Azza wa Jal Liman Kara al Quran wa amila bima fihi Allah Yadilla fit dunya wala yashka fil ahira. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has promised that whoever reads the Qur'an and follows that which is in it, and he applies that which is in it, then he will not go astray in this life. And nor will he be miserable in the hereafter. And nor will he be miserable in the hereafter. So therefore this is a great encouragement from Al-Imam Al-Hafiz Al-Mizi rahimahullah ta'ala Man has al-ilma wa dhakarahu saluhat dunyahu wa akhiratu that whomsoever obtains whomsoever obtains the knowledge and reviews it and he, why, why is reviewing it so important? to keep it with you because if not it will go away to keep it with you because if not it will go away then his whole life and he, in this life and the hereafter will all be rectified and good for him will all be rectified and good for him so the means of happiness truthfully and the means of joy and safety and security in this life and the hereafter is by way of knowledge. It's by way of knowledge and the application of that knowledge. Man yuridi Allahu bihi khayran yufaqihu fi din. Whomsoever Allah wants good for, He grants him understanding in the religion. It's by way of knowledge, the true knowledge that is implemented seeking the pleasure of Allah. The true knowledge that is sought and implemented seeking the pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jal. So this is the means for happiness and the means for, for failure and loss and, and misery. And sadness and grief and sorrow is ignorance. What do billah? Is ignorance of, of this knowledge. To be ignorant of this knowledge and to not know. Or to be ignorant of, of, of this knowledge meaning to know it but not to not apply it. And this is the means for, for misery. And uh, from that is that a person will learn and then forget. That a person who will learn and then forget. And it because the knowledge will not stay with him. Man has al ilma wa dhakarahu saruha dunya wa akhiratu fa adim. فَأَدِمْ لِلْعِلْمِ مُذَاكَرَةً فَحَيَاتُ الْعِلْمِ مُذَاكَرَةً So, فَأَدِمْ يعني مِنَ الْإِدَامَةً مِنَ الْإِدَامَةً أَدَامَ يُدِيمُ 
Adim. Idamatin. Fa Adim. Yani Fadawim. And he so so always فَأَدِمْ لِلْعِلْمِ مُذَاكَرَةً So always review, constantly review. Constantly be constantly review. The salaf has been narrated from them that uh, they would be moving from, from, from place to place, from lesson to lesson, from their house to the masjid or wherever they're going and uh, they are reviewing the whole time. They will not uh, be lost and the likes like this, rather they will take advantage of their time. They will, be not, they will not be lost in their mind and, and wandering and, and, and neglecting life and just going about heedlessly and the likes like this rather they will go from place to place and they will memorize the they, they, will, they will review the quran from place to place or they will review the hadith they're moving going from one class to another they will be reviewing hadith or they'll be re reviewing the quran it's been mentioned about a khatib al-baghdadi whenever he made hajj whenever he made hajj that he reviewed the quran a number of times he completed the quran from memory a, a number of times this is what was mentioned about him and his and his travels like the whole time that he's traveling, he's reciting the Book of Allah, repeating it time after time after time after time after time in his journey. This is what Yani was mentioned about about him. So the Salaf they they would take advantage of their of their day, and this is a beautiful uh, manner and a great benefit because many times a person maybe he's busy, he has to go from place to place and do things. But these pockets of time, whenever he's able uh, to to do what he's doing, but at the same time he's able to think about knowledge and to review knowledge and to recite the Quran and to recite the Hadith, to take advantage of those pockets of time. Maybe somebody who would drive to work in the morning who have 15, 20, 30 minutes alone in the car, or more, or more. That's a great opportunity to review knowledge and to go over knowledge and to review the Quran or to review the Hadith or to review Surah Thalatha or Quran Al Arba. Or, or, or the likes like this, or to listen to a lecture and to review a lecture, so on and so forth. These are all great opportunities yani, for benefiting, or even to memorize something new likewise. To memorize something new likewise, while a person is driving to or from work, or while a person is taking care uh, of some business, or likewise a woman in her home, maybe she's taking care of her family, fixing the food, but she can listen to uh, the Qur'an, or she can review the Qur'an, or she can herself recite the Qur'an, or she can review the Hadith, or she can listen to a lecture while, she, while she's doing these affairs while she's doing these affairs to take advantage of the time and, and to benefit yani, with knowledge, to benefit with knowledge. In this manner, the knowledge, it, it will grow. It will grow, it will increase, it, it will become firm, it will become strong. A person who will fall in love with it and it will be a great benefit. And from the, and from the attributes of the people of faith, وَمِنْ سِفَاتِ أَهْلِ الْعِلْمِ نَحْمَتُهُمْ فِي الْعِلْمِ حَتَّى لِقَى أَغْبِلْتْ بِذِ النَّهَمِ uh, the poet he mentions that from the attributes of the people of faith is that is that they have a fervent desire and love for knowledge until they die until they meet Allah so have glad tidings and, and, and hope to be like that person and he referring to the statement of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam man humani la yashba'an man human la yashba'an two people with fervent strong desires and cravings they never become full they never become full Two people who have de fervent desires and cravings in their hearts, they never become full. Man humani la yashba'an. Talibu al-ilmi wa talibu al-dunya. The seeker of knowledge and the seeker of the worldly life. These two, they never become full. They never get full. They get, they, 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 the more they get, the more hungry <laughs> they become. And this is like what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned about Ibn Adam. If he's, given two mount if he's given a mountain of gold, what would he want? To have another one, he'll never be full until, uh, until the dirt is shoved in his mouth. Any meaning until he dies, until he dies. And if this is the case, so a person is only going to be attached to the worldly life or attached to this knowledge. So in this meaning, if he attaches himself with this knowledge, then he will find great benefit. And many times, likewise, along with that, Allah will provide for him. Allah will provide for him. فَأَدِمْ لِلْعِلْمِ مُذَاكَرَةً فَحَيَاتُ الْعِلْمِ مُذَاكَرَةً so he says, Rahimahullah, so therefore always, and he constantly review the knowledge. فَأَدِمْ لِلْعِلْمِ مُذَاكَرَةً So constantly review the knowledge. فَحَيَاتُ الْعِلْمِ مُذَاكَرَةً And because indeed the life of knowledge is reviewing it. The life of knowledge is reviewing it. So if we take this statement here of al mizi the life of knowledge is reviewing it. And we take the statement of Ibn Shihab al-Zuhri, Rahimahullah, what do we understand from that? Yani there's something in the fuqaha they say المفهوم المقالفة المفهوم المخالفة دليل الخطاب دليل الخطاب ها that, that not reviewing the knowledge is if, if, if reviewing knowledge is the life of knowledge then what is the death of knowledge? 
to, the death of knowledge is to not review. So if a person reviews the knowledge, it will be alive with him. It will be fresh with him. It will be good with him. It will be fruitful with him. It will be beneficial for him. for him. Like a tree, for example, if it's alive, then what will it do? Produce fruits, produce shade, much benefit for the person. But if the tree dies, then along with that, the fruits and benefit wither up and die as well. So likewise, the knowledge, if it's alive, then a person, he will benefit from that and the fruits of that. But if uh, it's not alive, then uh, those benefits that he has likewise will go away. Likewise will go away. So uh, for this reason, we chose to make review. Mudakara. 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 What's the name of the book, the book we're studying?